from Television City in Hollywood, the Red Skelton Hour. With the Tom Hansen dancers, the Alan Copeland singers, David Rose and his orchestra, our special guest star, Herb Griffin, Oliver Shagnasty, and here he is, Red Skelton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel good tonight, you know. I, I just see now that the uh, the Academy Award nominations are out. The Academy, that's the Actors USO. <laughs> hey, last year, I went to the Academy Award, and I sat next to Elizabeth Taylor. And finally, I had to move. Burton said I was getting heavy. <laughs> but they got some wonderful pictures out. There's one called Lion in the Winter. And then there's one about the income tax called Lion in April. <laughs> and Romeo and Juliet, there's another picture. I want to tell you one thing, though. Shakespeare didn't die one minute too soon. Okay. <laughs> Do you know when Little Red, my wife and I, we go to the movies, we're sort of like Romeo and Juliet. I sit in the orchestra and she sits in the balcony. <laughs> you may not believe this, but I know every word in the play. Only last week I stopped in the middle of the street and I looked up and I says, but soft. What light through yon window break? It is the east and Juliet is the sun. And the cop tapped me on the shoulder and he says, no, it's the YWCA and you're under arrest. <laughs> well, I was so embarrassed, not only embarrassed, I almost fell off my stilts. <laughs> and there's another picture that was a surprise to me was Rachel Rachel. Yeah, I thought Rachel Rachel was about teenagers. You know how kids are, you gotta call them twice. <laughs> Hey, speaking of double names like that, Simone, Simone, you remember an actor called William William? Remember him? Sure, he was the first double bill. <laughs> I just felt my option go. <laughs> and Oliver is another one that won a lot, won the most nominations was, was Oliver. And uh, I can't help but love those British actors, you know, they walk out, they say, oh, say there, boy. Oh, but, 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 all that stuff you know. Oh, I got around with the governor in the morning there. Oh, I got a woman coming over. Lunch. What is your boy? What is your boy? What is your boy? <laughs> to be a British actor, you got to have two things chap lips and gas. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, my friend. Kirk and Heathcliff, the two seagulls are talking. One of them said, uh, Did you hear about that pretty little uh, pullet over at the chicken farm? Well, that little pullet is gonna go to work in the motion pictures. He's gonna do a part where she has to lay 50 eggs a day. Gertrude says, 50 eggs? Oh. <laughs> poor thing, poor thing. What kind of a picture is that? He says it's called Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Pullet. <laughs> oh, probably lay an egg in there. Hey, I would like now, if I may, to try and do a little pantomime of the different people at the Academy Awards. Now, first is the old-time fellow, when the, when, the, when the Academy going there had great dignity to it.
Tonight, the Academy pays tribute to one of its most distinguished actors, a man who has been in motion pictures since their inception. His career goes back to 1900 and the days of Nickelodeon. He has made over 3,000 motion pictures. As a matter of fact, he's been too busy to ask his friends to vote for him. But tonight, the Academy wants to acknowledge and pay tribute to this gentleman. We have asked him here tonight for this special award to Ethelbert Goodhart, the oldest actor in the world. Tonight, Red Skelton as Bolivar Shagnasty, Cauliflower McPug, and Willie Lump Lump. And Merv Griffin in If at First You Don't Succeed, Forget It. He won't like it if I marry somebody else. It'll cut in on our date. There's no future with that Bolivar shag, Nasty. While you're waiting for his ship to come in, your shape will go out. <laughs> I'm trying to get through here, buddy. Are you one color or you're a very close-knit family? <laughs> I think you have to take out a prey permit when you go for a walk, don't you, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll fix you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, he just busted me, right? You see me let the air out of that Texan? <laughs> I just busted my jaw. So my what? My chin, my chin's gone. Huh? What do you mean, so, so what? what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got four of them. I only got one. You dare say that? I have four chins? Well, either that or your lips just had puppies. <laughs> you stay away from my daughter. I don't want her wasting her life on a professional nothing. Oh. She's going to go on the Merv Griffin program. Oh, she is. Yeah. Maybe a movie producer will give me a contract and I'll get some exciting parts. You got some pretty exciting parts right now, you know? <laughs> Bolivar, why is it always my figure? Why can't you show some interest in my IQ? I like your figure, but your IQ and the figure's the same, 38. <laughs> my daughter is bound to attract a rich husband. Beauty runs in our family. Downhill, no doubt. <laughs> it sure ran away from you, I'll tell you that. Bolivar, you may not believe this, but Mother once entered a Miss America contest. Really? Tell me, which one of the 13 states did you represent? <laughs> to your information, I was Miss Grand Canyon. <laughs> Why, I wouldn't touch that answer with a 20-foot pole. <laughs> I tell you, Grand Canyon, you sure got the mouth for it, I'll tell you that. Oh, here comes the elevator. Maybe oh. it's Merv Griffin. Oh. oh, I'm so nervous. Don't get nervous. Now, when he comes in, just show him a little class, you know. Give it this stuff, you know. Really, show him all. Yeah. Give him that John Wayne walk. <laughs> It 
if you're auditioning for a dating game, you're on the wrong floor. <laughs> I'm balling with Shag Nasty. Well, a little penicillin will clear that up, Shag Nasty. <laughs> I'm very busy. I need guest stars on this show tonight. I have to have guest stars to separate my commercials. Oh, I see. Here, let me get you to show you how efficient I am. Hello. Hello. Hello? There's nobody on there. You're talking on the wrong end. Well, that's the only end that's got a mouth on it. <laughs> I could thing myself. Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody. You're, you're talking on the wrong end now. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm, I've got to make a change in my show. Oh, really? Yes. Instead of glamour stars, I want people that my audience can identify with. Oh, the I man see. on the street. The man on the street. Yes, How the street. insulting. My Myrtle's standing here and he talks about the man on the street. Oh, cork up the leak in your head, will you? <laughs> Come here, Moyes. Now, to get in television, you've got to make up to the producers a little. Make up to the producer. Yeah, how do you suppose Gentle Ben got that fur coat? I, I'm not going to permit my daughter any any hanky panky for a fur coat. There's no hanky panky, Big Ben. Come on. <laughs> put on out there, will you? There you are. Go downstairs and put on your Goodyear sign and come back, will you? <laughs> Call Caltech and tell them not to worry about their seismograph, will you? <laughs> hey, now, Moidle, audition for Mr. Griffin. Oh. Uh, Mr. Griffin. Yes? How about a swingy song? I got a special arrangement. Yeah, so I noticed. <laughs> Listen. Yes. I've got rhythm. Huh? I've got music. You look like you got a touch of poison oak, too. <laughs> well, I never. Well, maybe that's why you never got anywhere. Here. <laughs> Yeah. Monsieur de Roche is here. Who? Monsieur de Roche. Send him in. That's the European singer. If he can't pass the audition, I'll be forced to hire one of your clients for tonight's show. If he don't make out, you'll hire one of my clients. Pardon? I say you'll make out one of my you'll hire one of my clients? If he don't make out. That's what I just said. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's, that's where you heard it. it. Yes, yes. No. <laughs> yeah. He won't make it. Oh, won't he? No, no, no. Look, there's the mic. Would you fix it for the audition? Let me well, let I'll him fix in. it for the audition. Uh, Mr. DeRoche. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Bonsoir, le jour ne connaissait les pas de trois la fois. Ah, Monsieur, le yes. plaisir est pour moi. Ah, oh. Well, no wonder he's not interested in the dating game. <laughs> what did he say? I'm worried about what I said. <laughs> you cannot sing. The microphone, it is too low. Oh, well, uh, just start singing and, and he'll lift the microphone. Yeah, I'm, I'm very late. Place. I have to rehearse Come my back when you're late. Oh, 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 And now, The Merv Griffin Show, starring Merv Griffin. Thank you. The guy that made that drape must be the same guy that makes my pants. Well... I'm glad you all came, and we have a terrific show for you. A lot of great guests, and I'm going to get right to our first guest. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a very famous plastic surgeon, Dr. Edwin Halverson. Doctor! Oh, hello, Mayor. Hello, hello, Doctor. Nice to be here, Nice Mayor. to see you so happy. Well, yes, Sit indeed. right down. Well, and let's... thank you, Mayor. Thank there you. A lot of guests, and I want to get right to the first question. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Tell me, Doctor, why? Why do most people go to a plastic surgeon? Well, I would say to change the shape of their noses. When I was a kid and you wanted the shape of your nose changed, all you did was talk back to your father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a good laugher, Doctor. Um, doctor, I understand not only have you written the book on uh, plastic surgery, yes. but you've written other important books. Oh, yes, I've written several books on uh, plastic surgery and yes. one about marriage. Back. Yes, uh, wow. it concerns an 80-year-old man who marries a 19-year-old girl and wants to have children. <laughs> What's it called, Mission Impossible? <laughs> there you go again, Doctor. Yes. You know, in keeping with our new policy to bring in addition to glamour stars, 
We're going to present the man in the street. Oh. And we've gone a little bit further today. We've got one right from the gutter. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Cauliflower McPug. Oh, well, uh, who is he? Who is Cauliflower McPug? Yeah. The man beloved by ring fans everywhere. Why, he's been in, he's been in the ring for years. He hears birds and bells. He's marvelous. Oh, yeah. Cauliflower <laughs> McPug. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. How are you there, boy? How are you doing there, boy? Hey, duck, duck, duck. Uh, boy, there's a flock of cuckoos that went over. How do you know they're cuckoos? Well, they're on their way to Miami. They think they're going to make it. Uh, <laughs> I feel good tonight. Terrific. I, I got to tell you about the fight I had last night. Yeah? <laughs> the first punch I had that poor sucker scared to death. Yeah. He thought he'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, there! Are there more of them? Yeah, English sparrows. How do you know they're English sparrows? They got chap lips and gas. <laughs> English sparrows? Yes, oh yeah. boy, I tell you, they're, they're, you're looking good. You're looking uh, good, man. You're looking you're good. Looking good. You're, no, looking you're looking good. You're looking good. You're feeling. I feel fine. Yeah, I feel yeah, fine. Yeah, I yeah. feel fine. Well, how are you there? Oh, you want that hat? What? <laughs> I want to tell you, McPug. That poor fellow was caught in a hair raid. <laughs> hey. Yes. Can I tell you about my big fight? Your big one. My biggest fight was yeah. in Madison Square Garden. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I tell you, they, they wanted me to throw the fight. Throw it? The guy said, me throw the fight, lay down in the second round. I said, are you out of your skull? Me lay down in the second round? <laughs> I never went that distance before. <laughs> but here I am in Madison Square Garden. I mean, I walk out to the dinner of the ring and I take off my robe. <gasps> Men screamed and women fainted. I forgot me trunk. No. <laughs> Early, aren't yes. they? Yes. My, my. Would you care for a tutti fruity? I heard a good humor, man. Um, Mr. Griffin. Yes? Is this the chap you were referring to? It says he's Cauliflower McPug in the front. I'm Cauliflower McPug in the back, too. I go all the way through, buddy. <laughs> Cauliflower? Yes? I think you have to excuse me. What would you do? I have to finish interviewing... <laughs> I have to interview the doctor. <laughs> Would you please sit down in front? No, I want to show you something. I want to show you. I, I, I sit down in front. There, it's, only, it's the only direction I can sit down yeah. here. <laughs> hey, I'll have to ride home and tell my mother I'm getting taller. <laughs> Since I came in here, I've grown two feet. <laughs> tell me. Yes? Why don't you sit on the couch? Why do you sit on my lap? You're a doctor? I thought you'd be more sanitary. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding, you know. People don't think I got all my marbles, but I got them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all there, yeah. aren't they? Come here, I want to show you something. I'm going to let huh? you in on something. I got to get out of here because I got to get back to the, do my road work. I got to do some road work. Look, Pug, I know you're in training. I know you have to get to sleep, so let's just say goodnight, and I hope you sleep well. I'll come back on your show some other time. Oh, you don't want to do that. Yes, I do. No. McPug, it, it, it only pays $25. Why should you... That sounds reasonable. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, but it costs you $10 for your hotel room, right? That, that sounds reasonable. $8 for dinner. That sounds reasonable. $15 for the train to get here. That sounds reasonable. $4 for taxis. That sounds reasonable. $2 for the tip. That sounds reasonable. 10% to your agent. Well, naturally, that's why. You still want to come back? Sure, I need the money. <laughs> To go right into the studio audience and I guess get insulted at close range here. All right, any questions, anything you want to ask? All you married guys who aren't with the wives, wave to your divorce lawyers. Go on. <laughs> who has a question? Huh? Yes, yes. I, uh, I read someplace that miniskirts are on the way out and that women are soon going to be wearing long skirts to completely cover their legs. Yes. Yeah, well, what do you think about that? Why would you ask me that? Well, what do I think about that? Yeah, yeah, what do you think about that? Comes a time in a man's life when he has to count on his memory, huh? Yeah, that's true. You know, You're not well, are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm fine. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Stuck your finger in the wall plug, did you? <laughs> Good heavens. Who blew you up? <laughs> Could I ask you? What kind of a little question would you ask you? Well, I just wondered if you ever thought there was really life on the moon. Why, did you get your hair done for the trip? <laughs> <laughs> that's weird, lady. I don't know anything about the moon. 
What's the kind of audience it's going to be, huh? Look, buddy, I know what I want. You don't understand. I, I'll get a seat, buddy. Don't but, worry. But, but sir, I, I, we're doing a TV we, show here. We're going to do what? A, a television show here, Go right sir. ahead. You're not bothering me, buddy. <laughs> I see a seat. Let me get in there. i get a seat over there. There's a seat in here. That's it, folks. Don't get up. Make him jump. <laughs> I gotta find there's a seat over here. Get right, your big right, feet right. over there. Man. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was one in here. <laughs> Sir, uh, why don't you go back to your regiment, sir? <laughs> Boy, what guys they got here. They show you a seat and then match you for it. <laughs> Hi, Merv. I come all the way here just to see you. Who are you? <laughs> what are all these people doing in my living room? <laughs> no, sir. Uh, don't be angry. Oh, I'm I not. say, who are you? I am Willie Lump Lump. Really, lump lump? That fell with two lumps. <laughs> yeah. What's your father's name? Chitty Bang Bang. Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> so what do they call you? I was the youngest Chitty of the family. <laughs> you ever had the feeling you're going sane? <laughs> May I ask? What? A very personal question? Uh, yes. Have you been drinking? You don't get this way from eating peanuts. <laughs> Wow. I got a light up in here. The guy down the street just gave me a cigar. Oh, no, no, there's no light in here, for heaven's sakes. People sitting around. You're a walking alcohol lamp. Are you kidding? The whole place would go. Oh, no. I hadn't been drinking that much. I know when I've had too much to drink. Yeah, when's that? Well, you know what? I, 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 I put two little corks in my ear. Yeah. And I drink until they pop out. <laughs> and I put them right back in and start all over again. <laughs> nope. Whoa, 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 wait. I'll be right back. No, no. <laughs> Stay with me, sir. This is going rather well. Somebody stole your ice cream. <laughs> Pardon? Well, don't be selfish. Why don't you bless everybody? Oh. <laughs> Careful. Keep your eye on the owl. Up there. The, the owl. <laughs> Uh, never mind the alley. You got two fives for a ten. <laughs> you know, I, really, did that, but I just had more fun over here. I came all the way in just to see you. Where'd you come from? I huh? Where'd you come from? <laughs> they didn't tell me. <laughs> I, Nobody to talk to? I, I came clean from Los Angeles. Clean from Los Angeles. And boy, that's a novelty with all that smog. I'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> do you have a job, Willie? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I got a job. What do you do? Well, I, I, I work for a very old man. Yeah. A very old man. He's kind, very gentle. He said to me only the other day, he said, Willie, you know what's wrong with the world today? I said, no, I, I, I. And he said, everybody, come around. I said, come on. <laughs> and the poor guy, he was just born. I said, don't you believe that? And he said, believe me, and he's fine now. <laughs> you know, he'll some... probably bloop that out. Yeah. <laughs> What scares me is I think I understood you. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, I'm having fun. I come all the way into New York just to see you, Merv. I don't know where I've been or what I've done, but I wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> I just wish you wouldn't breathe on my chin, though. Get a load of the hair, will you? Huh? <laughs> you look like you were electrocuted and lived. <laughs> He looks like a 30 cent cedar muff, don't you? <laughs> boy, I tell you, I, yeah. boy, no wonder that book she's got in her uh, lap there. She's reading a mystery story. What's the name of it? You ought to get it. It's hair raising. <laughs> <laughs> he looks, lump, lump, look. Right. It's a delight to have you on the show. If you want to be on the show, please go in the stage door. Come in by the rear, would you? Come in the back. Is it all right? Sure. All right, Murray. I think you're great. I think you're great. And I hear you're going with CBS this fall. Yes, 
boy, had a friend of mine. I'll get him to come on your show for you. Who's that? His name's Skelton. Oh! <laughs> Would I be thrilled? a chair that needs stuff. People. I said when I looked at you on the, on the, on the tube. Tube? That's TV talk. I was looking at you on the tube, and I said, that guy just don't look right to me. You just don't look right. You just don't look right. I've seen a lot of doctors in my day, but you just don't look right to me. As a matter of fact, I can hardly see you. <laughs> Don't look so innocent. <laughs> well, 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 you want to talk about people. I heard what you said. Oh, well, well, well tell me, uh, what did I say? Hmm? I, I said, what did I say? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Mr. Lump Lump, this is Dr. Halverson. He's a plastic surgeon. Uh, he didn't look sober, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> the first plastic surgeon I've ever seen. Hey, Willie. Hey, you know why them guys wear them little white masks? No, why? Just in case something happens, you'll never know who it is. <laughs> Willie, can I talk to you, please, at very close range here? Yes, yes. Just a word. <laughs> Willie, here I am. Good heavens, I've lost my legs. No, no. <laughs> Just stand. Oh, there they are. Well, little peg in the back now. Yes. What is it you want, sir? Huh? What'd you say? I say, what is it you want? <laughs> that breath of yours, Willie, is strong enough to melt a pot. My breath is strong enough to melt... Ah! You want to give me that? <gasps> well, now we've done it. You're an old pot melter. Yes. Now you don't have a pot to throw a commercial in. Yeah. Speaking of commercials, it's time for a word from our sponsor. Go ahead. Mr. Lump. Wait, Lump, wait. would you excuse me, please? What do you do? Yeah. Ladies, uh, if you want your furniture to glisten, try Shino. Huh? I'll try some of that. <laughs> you can't drink that. That's furniture policy. That's all right. My stomach is French provincial. <laughs> Drinking furniture polish should give him a quick finish, shouldn't it? <laughs> Are they coming? <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, he's yeah, sure going to help you out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, for the best we Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that, oh. sir. I didn't oh. mean, here, let me, let me, let me, oh. let me, let me get that off of you. Oh, there. oh. My oh. good man, my oh. good man. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, you glazed my eyeballs. Look at the white ones shine, though. Yes. <laughs> you want me to match them up? No. Boy, no. your eyes look awful. They must be horrible from the inside. <laughs> uh, you look like a stained glass window. Do I? Yeah. You have a terrible drinking problem. I do. You do. Terrible. Oh, I don't drink too much. I only drink on people's birthday. Yeah, well, I'd say you drink then six, 365 days a year. There's a lot of birthdays, yeah. buddy. <laughs> yeah. Willie, what? can I be serious? Sure. Don't you realize that your drinking will break up your family? Ah, hmm? uh, Willie? You mean you won't like me anymore? Your family and your children, they 
lose respect for you. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, if that's the way it is, I won't drink anymore. I don't drink anymore at all. I don't even, I'll even pour the fluid out of my lighter. Uh. <laughs> That cuts that stuff oh. pretty good, you know, if you ever... And I'll never terrific. let that demon rum touch my lips yeah, again. You keep a stiff upper lip. Mm. I don't know how you're going to keep that lower one from sagging. <laughs> That's great. You work. can't just read what's on the card. No. <laughs> never trust anybody let... with your career. No. Well enough alone. <laughs> okay, I'm through with the drinking. Oh, uh, Willie Where boy. Where is that sout? The voice of the turtle. <laughs> there you are, you drunken bum. You no good loafer. You whiskey sweller. That's Mrs. Lumplum. <laughs> oh, Willie boy, just in time. Do you realize that if you continued drinking, this woman would leave you? Fifty years. <laughs> How long you in for? Huh? <laughs> How long you in for? <laughs> Two hundred years. Not before me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Do me a favor when you get out, mail this letter, will you? Ladies and gentlemen, our special musical guest star, Mr. Merv Griffin and the Tom Hansen Dancers. I am Henry the Eighth. I am Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before, and everyone was an Henry. She wouldn't have a Willie or a Sam. I'm her eighth old man named Annery. Oh, Annery the eighth, I am. I'm Annery the eighth, I am. Annery the eighth, I am. I'm Annery the eighth, I am. Annery the eighth, I am. Annery the eighth, I am. I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. And everyone was an Annery. She wouldn't have a Willie or a Sam. I'm her eighth old man named Henry. Henry the eighth. Henry the eighth. Henry the eighth I am. I'm Henry the eighth. I'm Henry the eighth. I am. And now the silent spot. Red Skelton as the Indian Scout.
Thank you. 
Here he is again, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our sponsors and staff, may I say how proud we are that you invite us into your homes every Tuesday night. So until we meet next week, we'll say goodbye for now, and may God bless. Thank you. So our time together is running out And our curtain's about to fall Would you save this hour next Tuesday night Cause we'd love to invite you all So goodbye Until the moment when We'll see you all again To our friends near and far This is Art Gilmore speaking.